Yeah, so I'm Sean Casey. I'm an extreme filmmaker. How extreme, you might ask? So extreme that I built a tank to go into a tornado. How'd that come about? Well, it all takes place on this beach, on this little island called Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean, where we were making a film called Amazing Journeys, and we were following these crabs that would deposit their eggs into the Indian Ocean. Those little crabs would develop, and they'd come back as this kind of orange carpet up back out of the sea onto the rocks, and we needed that last shot, but they were late. So I was left, marooned, unsigned with an IMAX camera. And um, has anybody had an island fever? You probably get cabin fever up here, right? You start going insane, fingering knives, stuff like that? No? No? I kind of went, <clears throat> that kind of island fever, wearing brassieres made out of coconuts, right? Um, the one thing I did bring with me and kept me from going completely insane was a book about storm chasing and the idea of having this road trip across the heart of America chasing tornadoes. Um, that's the only thing that kept me from going insane because I knew when I got back I was going to take a long road trip, right? So on December the 25th, the red crabs came back and I left the island. And the first thing I did when I got back to the United States was I did internet research, found a, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Josh Werman, who is a uh, meteorologist, an extreme meteorologist. He has these radar trucks that gets really close to these tornadoes, scans them, um, cl collecting his data sets. Also, his father is Richard Werman, who is the founder, creator of TED. Kind of interesting. Huh? Yeah? yeah? No? Oh, well. <laughs> so this is one of his radar trucks. He's doing some scans of the tornado. This is a scan of a storm and tornado. You can kind of see that hook-type echo that I'm sure you guys have heard before. This is a scan from the stationary radar installations that are across the United States. This is a scan that he gets. You can still see that kind of hook-type shape up in the top. So he gets high resolution of um, these storms and tornadoes by getting extremely close to them with these radar trucks. Um, for us, though, this was the first time I ever went storm chasing, right? And so. My thought was, you know, I'm going to rent a minivan from Enterprise, right? And, <laughs> well, they're the roomy. They have two doors that slide open. You can film out the side. Um, and also, Enterprise has this nice program where after you've destroyed the vehicle, you can drop out after hours and put the keys in a drop box. <laughs> <clears throat> but when I first started chasing, I fell head over heels in love with the environment out there. As a filmmaker, to drive underneath these mountain-sized supercells alive with electricity, and, and, and motion and being immersed in the rain and the hail, um, all, the while, all the while trying to get close to these tornadoes, it was, it was mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing because here in front of you was this violently rotating column of air tearing at the ground. It was like being in the presence of some pagan god that was there in front of you. It was, it was just incredible. There was a time when these tornadoes, when you were lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time, and this tornado was coming directly at you, that you had to get out of there. And usually you were leaving a scene when these tornadoes were within 200 yards, it was just breathtaking. But you were having to leave, and I desperately wanted to build something, build something that could... <laughs> you actually can't buy these? <laughs> to build a platform that we could get those shots that really did justice to something that I'd fall in love with. Monster trucks, a little too macho, and a lot of, you know, wind gets underneath, it's gone. Hovercraft technology, it's still kind of iffy. This is a vehicle that I actually based my vehicle on. This is a prop or prop vehicle from 1977 sci-fi film called Damnation Alley, where they have to drive across the apocalyptic United States, and there's these flesh-strip-eating um, cockroaches. Um, anyway, this is my design. <laughs> I didn't have any funds for this film, so I had to actually design and learn how to weld and fabricate the first vehicle, the TIV, Tornado Intercept Vehicle, right? You know? Well, if, like any good American, you have a problem, you build a tank, right? Um, only issue with the vehicle is that we got pulled over 17 times the first year by local law enforcement. <laughs> I actually bought my own badge, also never badge an officer. Also with the vehicle, you know, you take shortcuts. One, you don't have money, and one, you're doing it all yourself. So Berber carpet from Home Depot, big no-no. The vehicles would always leak, and you'd get what we call the man stench going, and this woman's getting a, s a little sniff of man stench. So this project took eight years to finish. The first six years, we had no funding. We finally built a better vehicle, TIB2, a vehicle that could change its shape. It has these panels that would go to the ground, spikes that go in the ground. You had a lot of buttons to push and worry about, keep your mind off the fact that tornadoes coming at you, right? Also, 
this project called Vortex 2 happened in 2008, um, 2009, no, eh, anyway, around there. Um, well, it was the largest scientific expedition ever put together to study tornadoes. There were 11 radar trucks, there were 150 people, there were teams that were putting pods in the path of these tornadoes, all to study the phenomena so that their data sets, these massive data sets, would benefit, of course, mankind by, um, in the future, having better and more accurate warnings. I should backtrack. One of the things that I decided, you know, the tank was a good idea, was that I had talked to Josh Worman, and he said, yeah, do it because he could instrument our vehicle, and we could be a movable pod and gather, the, gather like a weather station what the winds were like as that tornado was coming towards you and hitting you. And also in return, he was doing live scans of that tornado and over the radio giving us max wind speeds of that tornado so that we, we knew we weren't getting into something that would do, kill us. So a typical chase day, um, you know, you have the day heating of this moist air near the uh, ground. That, that moisture goes up, uh, there's a trigger mechanism. So in the afternoon, you have these supercell storms, large rotating storms, and then you hit the road, you know? You hit the road, you, you target your storm, and hopefully it produces a tornado. Um, this is actually the tornado that ends the, the IMAX film I did. It's called the Goshen County Tornado. Anybody from Goshen County? That's in the state, as it turns out. Another quinky dink. Um, <laughs> so when that tornado was this is the only tornado in the history of mankind that had 11 radar trucks from various di distances scanning it. We, however, of course, in the TIV, you know, we stand our ground from that tornado as it's coming at us. And this is actually a still. We did this TV show, right, Storm Chasers? This is a still of me holding onto the turret. We have the IMAX camera up in the turret of the tank. And it was starting to violently bounce up and down the keepers. And I thought that this tornado was going to tear the turret out of the vehicle. There would go the IMAX camera that my father owns, and there would go the shot that I'd spent eight years trying to get. So I was actually holding on to the turret in the scene. And the only thing that I could think of at the time was, not that your life was flashing in front of you or oops, it was that how kind of eerily similar it was to Twister. <laughs> that was really what I was thinking about. Like I had, in a way, you know, uh, I, you felt a little silly. So with that film done, I, you know, it's in my blood to chase storms now, so we're going to do kind of a follow-on IMAX film called Wild Weather, and we're going to focus on tornadoes, monsoonal lightning, and then also hurricanes. And with these hurricanes, to film them, um, the idea is, the new idea is, this is the storm surge area. So as Superstorm Sandy, you saw that it pushed, a, on average, 14 wall of water inland. Um, and you would never, I don't think, want to film a hurricane out in open waters where you have 40-foot seas. So the aquative, <laughs> designed to operate in the shallow waters of the storm surge. Um, this w is what we are currently building for this new production. So you can see a pattern here, right? You can see, you can see a pattern, right? He's going to build something crazy again. It's because I, as a filmmaker, love um, to have an extreme challenge and to go into an environment of chaos and beauty, you know, and to capture with the IMAX format incredible images to take that to a larger audience. So there you have it. Thank you so much.